In this video, we're going to cover the vertebral column. We're going to start first with the general structures, surface markings of a vertebrae. Here we have a vertebrae. This large area here is called the body. The opening here where the spinal cord is going to go through is called the vertebral foramen. Then we have the walls around the vertebral foramen. This whole thing right here from here up is called the vertebral arch. And if we break that vertebral arch into parts, we have the vertebral or the pedicle. We just call it the pedicle. And here we have the lamina. So the whole thing is the vertebral arch. If you think of this as a house, this is the vertebral arch. The wall of the house is then called the pedicle, and the roof part of the house is called the lamina. Off the posterior aspect of the vertebrae is the spinous process, and on the sides you have the two transverse processes. So you have a transverse process here as well as here. Again, this is the body, this is the vertebral foramen, this is the vertebral arch. The parts of the arch are the pedicle and the lamina. Posterior you have the spinous process and each side you have transverse process. Looking at vertebrae that are articulated with each other, this opening where the spinal nerves will come out is called the intervertebral foramina. In between the bodies of the vertebrae are the intervertebral discs. Coming off the posterior aspect of the vertebrae are the spinous process. And then here you have the articular processes. In this case, it's an inferior articular process. This is where they articulate, the vertebrae articulate with each other. So again, we have the intervertebral foramina, the intervertebral disc, the bodies of each vertebrae, the spinous process coming off the posterior aspect, and then the articular processes. Over here, we have the body of the vertebrae. You have the articular processes. Again, in this case, it's superior, it's on top. Here you have the transverse process, and here you have the spinous process. Again, body, articular process, transverse process, spinous process. Looking at the cervical vertebrae, and there are seven, and you'll need to know that. The first two you're going to know, have to know the specific names of those vertebrae. This is the first, first cervical vertebrae, and it is called the atlas. One way you can identify a cervical vertebrae is by this structure here and here. These are unique to cervical vertebrae and that is the transverse foramen. So that's the transverse foramen. The whole cervical vertebrae, the specific name of this one is the atlas. Think of atlas held up the world and this holds up your head. The second cervical vertebrae is called the axis. If you think about it, it, this turns, your head turns on this bone, that is the axis, something turns on an axis. So the vertebrae is called the axis. Now this little nubby thing that sticks up is called the dens. It is called the dens. And again, you're responsible for that specific name of this specific vertebrae as well as this structure. To identify any other cervical vertebrae besides these two, the other five, which you look for is you look for these transverse frame. And if you see one, a vertebrae, and it's not the atlas and it's not the axis, it's one of the other five, you look for that transverse frame, and that's your biggest clue that it is a cervical vertebrae. The next things we're going to look at is identifying the difference between a lumbar and a thoracic vertebrae. Remember, there are 12 thoracic vertebrae in the examples here and there are five lumbar vertebrae. How do you tell the difference? It's pretty easy actually. The thoracic vertebrae in my mind always looks like a giraffe because the spinous process comes down. It 
doesn't go out it comes down so it almost looks like a giraffe's okay it looks like a giraffe there you can go with an elephant you can go with whatever you want so you have that spinous process that comes down you can also look at the vertebral foramen and it's very round it's very round and you can also look at the body and the body each side is pretty much equal in length so it has more of a square appearance to it so again you look for the spinous process that comes down the round vertebral foramen and the body that has the length and width are pretty much the same up here we have a lumbar vertebrae how do you identify that first you look at the body okay, it's much wider it's got more of a rectangle kind of shape to it you also look at the vertebral foramen and notice it's more of a triangle shape as opposed to the round shape you see here and when you look at the if you look at it from the back this is the spinous process in my mind it kind of looks like a moose right? but notice that spinous process does not come down it comes more straight out at you so again you look at the, the wider body more rectangular shape the triangle shape in the vertebral foramen and then that spinous process which is short and stubbier and does not come down it comes straight out the back that's how you tell the differences between the thoracic and the lumbar vertebrae and again remember your numbers cervical is 7 12 thoracic and 5 lumbar then you come down here's your fifth lumbar vertebrae and here you can actually see the facet joints between the articular processes here um, this then is the sacrum, which is fused vertebrae, and the coccyx down here, and the coccyx down here, sacrum up here, coccyx down here. So again, that reviews the vertebrae for you, uh, the different structures you need to know. Again, take the practice test and also fill out the worksheets.